Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome back to Books on the Go. I'm here with an Aussie April check-in. So as you might know, Aussie April is a very chilled out readathon uh, to encourage people to read Australian books during the month of April. And it's hosted by Jacqueline at Six Minutes for Me and Doris at Aldi Books. So I'll put their, I'll put a link to their channels below um, in the notes. And I thought I'd just check in. Last year, I failed miserably at Aussie April and I do read many Australian books uh, during the year, but for some reason last year, I had nothing on my shelves and nothing during April. Uh, to read that was Australian. So this year I am doing a little bit better and I've got three or four that I'll be reading this month. So I thought I'd do an update. So the first one is The Performance by Claire Thomas. And I actually read this in March, but I, I think a lot of people are reading it this month. It's Claire Thomas's second novel set in Melbourne. And it's about three women who are at the theater and whilst they're watching a play called Happy Days by Samuel Beckett, there are bushfires raging outside and it brings to mind the major bushfires that occurred at early last year, well last summer, so end of 2019, early 2020. Um, but in fact, I think Claire Thomas started writing this before that happened. But in any event, it's a, it brings up climate change issues. The three women are Margot, who's in her 70s, and she's a successful academic, um, but needing to perhaps think about retirement or dealing with some issues um, at work. And so she goes to see the play, which she has seen before. We have Ivy, who's in her 40s. She's a philanthropist and loves Samuel Beckett. And then we have Summer, who's an usher and an aspiring actor and is sitting sort of at the back of the theatre and is preoccupied because her girlfriend, April, is heading towards the bushfires to check in on her parents. So there, we get their inner monologues as they watch the play and we um, occasionally tap into what's happening on stage, which is really interesting as well. A woman called Winnie who's being buried up to her waist and then up to her neck and taught, it's really almost a monologue I think of her speaking and yeah lots of food for thought just in the play itself so which which made me want to go and see it um, anyway that's all that's the setup and we so we learn the backstory of Margot Ivy and Summer as the book goes along and then we cross to the bush not cross to the bushfires but we cross to the present day where we have the play we have the bushfires and those sort of issues woven through as well. So it's really intelligently structured, I think, really well done. And Claire Thomas is a great writer. So I found it very engaging, um, very easy to read, and I flew through this. So I'd recommend it. I think if you like Charlotte Wood, it has that women-centered, adult sort of intelligent um, observations about women's lives and, um, friendships and issues that women face and done with a sharp eye and I think that that's what it brought to mind for me but anyhow let me know if you've read it and what you thought and if not I think it is out now in the US as well I'm not sure about the UK but keep an eye out for it that's the performance by Claire Thomas and we just did that on the podcast as well and also for the podcast Annie and I read New Animal by Ella Baxter and I really loved this this to me was fresh, funny, interesting, very um, poignant at times and great strong writing and I didn't know what to expect so I think part of you know loving a book is when you going into a book with no expectations can help as well to um, for it to have a real impact. So this is a story about Amelia. She's the protagonist and she's a cosmetician in her family's funeral home business. So she put, does the makeup for the bodies and her mother works in the business and her stepfather, Vincent, also works in the business. And But she thinks of Vincent as her dad. And she has another dad, her biological father, Jack, who lives in Tasmania. She's also having a lot of one night stands and a, sort of avoiding intimacy. She had a friend called Daniel and something happened to him the year before, which she's still processing. 
and then something happens to her mother which causes her to have a sort of a meltdown and she decides maybe she needs to go to Tasmania um, to see her father Jack, her other dad, um, and gets involved in a kink club, a BDSM club. And it, all of that is dealt with both the scenes involving the funeral home and dead bodies and the kink scenes are dealt with with such compassion and also humour, but very sort of dry humour, that it really is sensitively done, but just, yeah, very authentic and really just about an interesting character, you know, a real person, uh, which I really loved. So trigger warnings for death in all of its forms, I think, for this one, because it's a very blunt, sort of honest book, so she doesn't shy away from anything, um, but really good. We Annie and I talked about it last week. I think I'm up have to edit that episode but we'll be uploading that soon and we felt like it had six feet under vibes but it also had a bit of a flea bag sensibility and other yeah I'm trying to think of the other sort of references I thought the writing reminded me a little bit of Daisy Johnson it's very visceral earthy kind of writing and a little bit of Avni Doshi so if you liked Burnt Sugar if you like Daisy Johnson I think that would be the sort of tone and um, honesty and sort of um, muscular, tactile writing that you would enjoy. So you would love this. Annie and I talked about that it is millennial fiction and I'm still trying to work out if I can do millennial fiction or not. But this, what I loved about it was it didn't feel self-absorbed. It didn't feel too, over, it wasn't overthinking about itself. It was just, the character and the story and so that's what I responded to and really loved it so I can't recommend this highly enough and I don't feel like it's getting enough attention so do have a look out for this one for Aussie April or beyond that's new animal then I'm reading I've just started growing up disabled in Australia which is a collection of essays edited by Carly Findlay about what it says on the cover growing up disabled in Australia and it's fabulous so far I've read I think three of the essays and the what's interesting about the three or two uh, at least one or two of the three that I've read is that the, the writer has said they didn't think of themselves as disabled they've got a condition or a, something that happened to them when they were young um, whatever it might be but they didn't equate that with being disabled and just the but once they've come to terms with it it has freed them up to have more of a community but also then the model of social disability which is putting the onus back on the community at large to adapt um, and to be more inclusive so that people with disabilities can do the same activities as able-bodied people so that's been interesting really good writing thought-provoking already and I'm looking forward to finishing that so I'm only a tiny way through but excellent so far so that's growing up disabled in Australia and then we have on my TBR Song of the Crocodile by Nadi Simpson so Nadi Simpson's an Aboriginal Australian author and this is a multi-generational saga uh, which is meant to be amazing I think Jacqueline had it as her tip for the Stella Prize it was long listed but it didn't make the short list Annie tells me that it's quite bleak um, Jacqueline said if you like Yagiasi or what was the other multi-generational one that she compared it to it'll come to me possibly the yield I can't remember now um, both of which I didn't actually get on with so at the moment I have trepidation about this one on the one hand if it's such a good book that it could have won the Stella I'm all in and that sounds amazing and on the other hand if it's bleak and it's like those couple of books that I didn't really get on with then I might struggle with it so and it's quite long as well yeah I think I'll just have to dive in there's no other way of finding out is there um, Sean from Sean the book maniac is intrigued as well by this one so I might be sending this to him once I've finished 
and we will see. We'll have a mini book club. But let me know um, what you thought if you've read it. But I think either way, I'll just have to start reading this one. So that is Song of the Crocodile. That's my Aussie April check-in. Let me know if you've been reading any Aussie books and any more that I should be adding to my list. And uh, I will see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.